back to the homestead. Hope y'all are doing well. Uh, we had an unexpected freeze last night and I'm really thankful to our Heavenly Father for putting it on my mind last night to cover our potatoes. Even though the weather didn't say that it was supposed to freeze, we thought it was going to get down to about 39, 40 degrees, but it definitely froze and it froze good last night. <laughs> So we're hoping and praying that nothing was destroyed. So glad that I covered the potatoes. And like many of you, I can't wait until the freezes are over and we can really get going in the garden. I've got a whole windowsill full of sweet potato starts that I'm super excited about this year. It's the second year that I've had success with sweet potato starts and this time it's been super successful. So can't wait to get those little starts in the ground. Still have a couple more weeks though to, to be patient and wait. The garden is coming along really well and it was exciting to be able to use chard for our breakfast this morning. Um, so on with our video, we're doing another what we eat in a day video. And so for breakfast this morning, we were able to have um, eggs off the homestead from our chickens. Uh, I just fried those up like I normally do. Um, and then with that, we also had the chard from the garden and then I've been trying to get more buckwheat into our diet. A lot of people don't like buckwheat, so I'm trying to figure out some creative ways to use buckwheat in our meals. Uh, it's so nutritious. It's actually not a grain, it's a seed. And it's just packed full of vitamins. Buckwheat even has the full B complex vitamins, including B17, which has been used to fight cancer. So there's just a lot of good stuff packed into those little buckwheat seeds. I used to sprout them myself, but I've been using a pre-sprouted buckwheat that I get um, online and I will leave the link in the show notes below for where I purchase our buckwheat. Uh, so, so far I've used the buckwheat and just a little bit of flour mixed in with our pancakes, not like straight buckwheat, but about one third of the flour mixture for pancakes and everyone pretty much likes those. And then this morning I tried an experiment. I did um, some buckwheat porridge and I divided it into two batches. One I made savory and I just added some Herbermeyer into it. The other one I made kind of like our salted caramel oatmeal and I put some molasses and honey in it to sweeten it. Both batches also had a lot of butter and a little bit of salt. Uh, so anyway, I thought it'd be fun to test it out on the family and see who liked the savory butter and who liked the sweet better. So that was fun. Good morning. Did you have good sleep? You have to do chores with Big Brother. <laughs> have fun. See you in a little bit. Bye bye. bye. I think I like sweet a little bit better. Wow, I was thinking you'd be the savory guy. <laughs> the sweet almost has a peanut butter taste to it. Cool. I like them both, but I think I like the sweet a little bit better. I like them both. Sweet a little bit better. I like them both. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> you like sweet better? Mm -hmm. Mama, can I maybe give all my buckwheat extra instead of extra eggs? <laughs> you just don't like that buckwheat, do you? I do a little bit, but not that much. <laughs> <laughs> sure, honey. <laughs> okay, so the savory one she spit out. Do you like the sweet one? Yeah. You like that? Not hot, it's okay. I like them both. All right, so that was breakfast, and I guess in the future I'm going to go with sweet. Last time somebody mentioned that they didn't think buckwheat and sweet went together, that's why I kind of decided to do the savory and actually had more of the savory buckwheat in. Ukraine when I was there working with orphans that was a, a big staple part of their meals was to do uh, Just the cooked buckwheat and it was more of a salty savory. I think they put some broth and different things in it 
So it brought back memories for me of going to Ukraine years ago. So moving on to lunch, I thought it would be fun to do kind of just a special fun treat type lunch, ice cream sundaes. So for that, we kind of prepped it ahead of time. I had put some overripe bananas in the freezer the day before. And so we took out those and used coconut milk as the main uh, liquid for the whole thing. We don't have a lot of milk right now um, on the homestead, so no extra cream. We're using up our food storage coconut milk. And then we also added a little bit of raw honey, not much because bananas are pretty sweet on their own. And then some raw cacao powder. And uh, had Esther Pie use the stick blender and she mixed all of that in one of our stainless steel milk jugs. Um, and then once that was all mixed and she tasted it, it was good to go. Um, put the lid on it and stuck it out in the freezer. So then for lunchtime, uh, we used our hand crank ice cream maker and it doesn't work super great because it doesn't chill really, really fast. And often you end up with kind of an icy mixture instead of a creamy mixture. So that's why we put the whole thing in the freezer ahead of time to pre-chill it in hopes that it would freeze a little bit faster in the ice cream maker and make it a little bit more creamy. And it worked. So we had a, a lovely creamy chocolate ice cream. And then uh, for toppings, we had some slivered almonds and cranberries to put on top. And the children also talked me into dark chocolate chips as another topping. Everyone loves to have a turn stirring this. It's like it's almost done. It takes about 15-20 minutes of stirring, something like that. If everyone takes a turn, it goes pretty quickly. <laughs> And where's mine? I'm gonna share mine with you, okay? Let me get my bowl. So, kind of like dessert for lunch, but it was fun. And sometimes you gotta just do something a little bit different to change things up a bit. For a treat, it was pretty healthy. So, that was a fun lunch. We went from a freezing night in the morning to now it's in the 70s. And she's playing in the water, loving it. <laughs> she was making a big old mess inside with water, so mm -hmm. we moved her out here so she could play in the water. And yes, she's wearing PJs. Uh, <laughs> you want to they all love doing this, dumping water from one container to another. <laughs> You like that new book? <laughs> Got upside down. Let's turn it around. Here we go. One of you in particular, I won't mention your name in case you want to be left anonymous, but one of you keeps purchasing gifts so fast that I am having a hard time getting more items put on the wish list fast enough. So it's like I put a, a new item or two on there and then it's at our doorstep within days. <laughs> So I'm trying hard to keep up with all the wish lists for the children, uh, for those of you who are enjoying getting gifts for them, and they are definitely enjoying them. Are you liking all your new clothes, Esther Pie? Yep. Got a new shirt on and a new skirt. This is one of our all-time favorite books, and we had read it so many times that it was just it was torn apart. The cover came off. I have it buried 
somewhere because I was going to try and fix it, but I ended up just putting it on the kids' wish list instead um, so that I don't have to try and mend the old one. Now we have a new one, and I'm sure it will get read many, many times. And then for dinner, every Monday night, we do salmon patty salad. <laughs> it's one of my favorite meals. Um, but it's not the favorite for everyone in the family. So we also um, have popcorn that night. It's our one night a week that we do popcorn. So it's pretty simple meal. It does take a while to prepare, but it is quite simple. I use two cans of salmon and I mix one egg in with it and some salt, onion granules, dried parsley, and dried dill. mix those all together, fry them up into patties. Also gathered some uh, lettuce from the garden, clean and chop that for the salad. And then I really like to put some kind of cooked vegetable on this salad. So we usually do beets. I just love beets on this salad. It, it's just a good combination in my mind and to my taste, but we didn't have any beets. Um, they're not ready in the garden yet, but we do have radishes in the garden. So I cooked up some uh, radishes and onions and so that became another topping for the salad. Uh, we also have nuts and seeds that are available for people if they would like to put on top. And then I make a dressing that is pretty simple, that works well with the salad, and all it is is half and half olive oil and lemon juice, and then a dash of liquid aminos, a little bit of dried parsley, and onion granules. And if you want a little bit sweet, some raw honey is nice as an option as well. That's it for the salad dressing, just five ingredients. Look for the recipe in the show notes below for that. So I let everyone just kind of eat that salad however they want. Some people have the patty separate and the cooked veggies separate. Some people mix everything together like me. <laughs> and then for popcorn, we do lots of different things for popcorn. Most often we just use a bunch of butter and sea salt on top but sometimes I like to change it up a bit and we'll do like chocolate popcorn or just honey butter popcorn. Sometimes I make it berry popcorn by putting berry powder in it. Most of the time, just good old butter and sea salt is what we like on our popcorn. You're welcome, enjoy. Mm. Mm. Good. That one tastes good. Can you speak her some food? That good. So that's what we had for dinner. So thanks again for joining us here on the homestead. Thank you again to all who have been getting gifts off of the wish list for our children. That's just been a huge, huge blessing. I wish we could thank each and every one of you individually and show you what the child got and how excited they were. We just don't have enough time to put all that into video. So thank you, thank you for giving those gifts. We really appreciate it. And until next time, we pray blessings over you and yours. And whatever you do, do it with your whole heart. <laughs> yeah. You having fun, Biddly Boo, too? Yeah. yeah.